Welcome to Kansas City Limits Radio. Today we've got in the studio the known, renowned Kansas City Tracer Heights Band. We've got a three trio here. The Psychedelic Brothers stopped by to see us. Welcome to the studio, guys. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. Glad to be here. We're so glad you could pause your day to come check out what's going on here at Kansas City Limits. Absolutely. Really looking forward to talking to you today. So there's lots of bands in Kansas City, but you guys seem to draw a crowd. A huge crowd, it seems. They love what you're doing. You guys have been doing it since uh, you guys were talking 2015. Yeah, so about eight eight years, almost eight. eight, Coming up on eight years. Coming up on eight years. Yeah, Yeah. eight years. It's been a good ride so far. Now, you know, trying to find the right fit is probably the hardest thing. You know, it's you almost got to kind of read each other's minds. Oh, absolutely. When it comes to the radio, but before we get into that, we want to thank our sponsors here real quick. We'd like to thank. Kansas City RVs, consignment, purchase, lease, go exploring, Kansas City RVs. We want to thank the Midwest Music Foundation, Area Musicians Promotional Resource, the AMPR, Black Moon Media, our TV editor and sponsor and provider of the Kansas City Limits TV program. We want to thank Briarcliff Business Partner Alliance, a networking group donating its money since 2009 to local charities, and Briarfest 8 coming up September 8th and 9th at Mackin Park, North Kansas City. We want to thank Frank and Mary at knuckleheadskc.com and all they do for us. Kansas City Limits TV and radio, they are right now showcasing everyone in Kansas City that's original music. We want to thank Soundworks Recording Studio right here in Blue Springs, Summit Video, SNS Printing, B4 Productions, and as I mentioned, Midwest Music Foundation, helping out musicians when they have that gap between their medical expenses and the rest of the world that needs their money for something they obviously didn't predict. Anyway, back to the studio. We're so happy we today we've got Tracer Heights in the studio, and we were just leading off on that improvisational approach to music. I That's like right. it. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh it's it's interesting because uh most of the time when we get on stage, we don't know what's going to happen. And that's like the this that's like one of the funnest things that I get to experience is that I get up there and I'm like what's going to happen and you know, I look at the guys and I'm like I don't know. It's so like okay, let's see let's see what happens. So, let's so really is that, explore, is that you know? 90% of the way you got you kind of know the genre you're going to do but you're going to let the music take you somewhere? Well, we have original music that we're trying to, you know, promote here in Kansas City and we like to take it from a uh, uh, kind of a standpoint where we have a skeleton of what we I mean, we might even come up with a set list, but then much like a lot of jam bands, that set list will kind of go by the wayside sometimes because you're just like, mm, the audience, I'm feeling something different or, or, you know, let's have something that's got more energy to it or something that brings the energy down a little bit, you know, that's more spacey and it just depends. So you tr- you're almost kind of setting the mood with the song to the vibration you guys are putting in the song. So in that improv, you're, 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 you're a composer with your song creating the mood out there. Yeah, I think that's really the goal is... So you've got your song, it might have a verse, a chorus, a a bridge. Um, There's like the studio version of it. But, you know, after that second chorus, maybe there's a five, 10 minute section that is just the song is the jumping off point for a section of music. Um, The ultimate goal would be it almost seems like you've you're composing something spontaneously just by playing off each other. I'm pretty sure that. Garcia and Hunter intended that as well in every song that they ever uh, yes. <laughs> ever wrote. I mean, yes, they did. That's exactly it's how kind they of a, lived it. They kind of invented the multi-genre colliding of genres in, in one set. Yes. Um, they kind of took the traditional bluegrass formula with the soloing 
and the blues rock formula, and they kind of just combined them, and they kind of well we said, it all Jeremy. To them. <laughs> On that, let me, real quick, uh, again, it's uh, we're here with Tracer Heights today, and and fellas, thank you for being on the show. Thanks for having us. Um, so we have, uh, well, I'll let you guys uh, uh, go ahead, give out your names and your and what you do for the band. Go ahead, Jeremy. So my name is Jeremy Clark, and I play bass guitar and a little bit of vocals for this band. Yep. My name is Joshua Pohl, and I play uh, all the drums and hand percussion, do some lead vocals and backup vocals. I'm Ben Hoppus. I'm the banjo player. I play both rhythm and lead, um, and uh, I do a lot of uh, composition and uh, songwriting. And that's something that these guys didn't mention, which I'm surprised. All of us write songs. Mm -hmm. That's that's a thing. It's like we all yeah, we have do lyrics together. Yeah, after yeah. eight years, all three of you write like songs like Garcia and Hunter. I mean, is that it all kind depends. of? It all well, depends. I was going to ask: Were you guys improving before you met each other? Were you guys doing your own separate things and then came together? Well, me and uh, me and Jeremy, we were in a band for about five years, um, uh, just together. But it was it was a blues band. It was a very strict very structured blues band, you know, yeah. where we couldn't do anything except Click for track world. Yes. It's <laughs> what I call it the barbecue circuit. Where, right. You know, it's just, you have to adhere to this strict, you know, Lindsay formula Shannon. for everything. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah. And, um, uh, after we left them, uh, we were like, you know, why don't we just get together and we'll just, we'll just play and play whatever we want. And, uh, we started working up. What was that one song? I think we tried into the mystic. Yeah, Once. I remember Into the Mystic was an exercise we went through because I always liked the bass line and just a groovy song, you know, so let's get together love and Van Morrison. just jam on yeah, that absolutely. a little bit. Yeah, we started playing with that, and then I think that kind of woke us up and was like, wait a minute, th we can do whatever the hell we want, you know what I mean? I was like, okay, this is cool. No I wasn't no a part rules. of the group at the time. I was actually playing with another cover band here in Kansas City called Half Price Buddha. For a number of years, um, kick ass! Yeah. Oh, no, it was it was a fun fun group. Not little Buddha, but <laughs> half, half price, price Buddha. Buddha. I yes. dig it. Uh, so I we, you were with them for a long time too. That was I, I was with them for about thirteen years. Yeah, wow, they had a good yeah. run. Yeah, we had a really a good name. run. Um, basically, what what I was doing was playing all of the drums on uh, a djembe hand drum and a cajon box instead of a drum set so i didn't really play drum set with that band at all and i ran into jeremy and had a chance to jam with jeremy and jeremy asked me he's like hey you ever think about doing a different band you know we're i got a buddy that plays banjo and he's he's really you know good and we want to do you know jam band stuff just like you do they know that i like fish i like the grateful dead i like jam bands quite a bit and so the three of us finally got together and played, but not after I saw a video of this man. <laughs> when he introduced me to him, he was playing, I mean, he was just shredding the banjo. I'm like, this is the coolest thing, but he was wearing this mask that looked straight out of the movie from Saul. Who, Ben was? Ben that was. was yeah. And I was like, this guy wants me to join a band. He's wearing a mask. Yeah, what's the deal with the I don't, mask? I don't understand what the deal is with the mask. But <laughs> when you would listen to the way that he played the banjo, it was just like, oh my gosh, this could be a lot of fun. And so when we started playing and it became more of a natural beat for Ben as opposed to like a, a drum machine that he had been using for so many years looping playing solo in Kansas City. Um, I, I like to think it came alive. Is that mass yeah. thing like a like a deaf punk? I don't know what know? it was. Oh my god. I was so I was young. I was just um very uh I the key is to, never to take the mask off. You realize that. <laughs> right. Well, I was just trying to. I think at the time I, I was just that's trying to. Gene Simmons. Oh, right? that's right. <laughs> I was trying to. I was trying to find like, who who am I? You know, who what am are I doing? You? Yeah, because I, I was playing out. I was doing. This, How old were you at this time? Uh, it was in my twenties. What twenty? Everyone's trying to figure two, it out in twenties. Yeah, my yeah. early twenties. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. I was like, I, I was just trying anything and everything, and I got inspired by Buckethead, actually. Oh. Really, and I was like trying to do all the shredding stuff, and you know, I that's that's kind of my thing is like I like guitar shredders like from the eighties, like Paul, sure. Paul Gilbert, Slash, you know, those guys are my main like lose a finger. Yeah, that's a yeah, yeah that's what I want to do, you know, right? Um, and uh, uh, I saw Buckethead, and I was like, oh, that looks like fun, and I put together this video with two different shots, and I was able to you know record directly into the PC, and you know, it was like one microphone on one amp, you know, and then right. I had my looper and, um, I, I blended it together and it became like this really weird, like greenish, 
horror show of this just me playing banjo. <laughs> I was wearing like the bunny suit you wear in surgery. Okay. And then the the crazy mask. Okay. If you guys want to check it out, it's it's actually called <laughs> I Head. Definitely want to check it out. <laughs> Where was that at? It's it's still on YouTube. It's called Heavy Electric Banjo. Heavy electric banjo. Heavy electric I banjo. Write that down. Yeah, he's got to see that. It's funny to think back of the. I didn't really. It was normal to me at the time because I had known Ben for a while and sure. knew all of his different facets. And but thinking back, I didn't really think it through. I guess sending it to Josh, <laughs> having never met the man. Like there was like, no like different. description ahead of time. Like he doesn't look like this all the time. Yeah, yeah. He's like, this, this is my friend. friend. No context. He plays banjo. Okay, cool. Play. <laughs> He's putting what is some that? Wow. <laughs> Your friend is crazy. Yeah, that's cool. I love Maybe that story. It was one video. It was so funny because yeah. I just did that one mm-hmm. video. Um, I did end up doing a sequel. It's not as it's not mm-hmm. as creepy and crazy, but. Uh, yeah, it's heavy electric banjo on, on YouTube. I like yeah. to say that, so that's the thing about Ben that has always stuck out to me. Like, he chose the banjo when he was a teenager. Um, that's just the instrument he plays. It doesn't matter what kind of music he likes or wants to do. It's He's going to do it with that banjo. So okay. if he gets into 80s shredding, he's going to do it with the banjo. I've always said... If he had just like accidentally maybe happened to choose like something else, like the accordion, he'd probably be trying to shred it like like Buckethead with he the accordion. He could do any. He it's could just, do anything. That's his instrument. Yeah, yeah. it he doesn't do, matter. He can do anything on the banjo. Like a, a couple of the covers we do, you wouldn't even think would be done on the banjo. You two, um, sweet Guns Child and Mine, Roses. Yeah, Guns and Roses, uh, <laughs> The Cure. Wow. I mean, just some crazy stuff. It's just that he does not play it. Doesn't play it like you typically would think somebody would play the banjo. It's fantastic. You know, and keeping people's nice. attention, you know, I'm sure that keeps people's attention. It, yeah, it you know. grabs their attention yeah, for sure. Yeah, they're interested in like, what is this he's comprising <laughs> of, of a song we've heard 10,000 ways never through a banjo. <laughs> right, yeah. right. Yeah, and it's it's a huge challenge sometimes. Like, uh, we, we do some fish covers, and uh, the those songs, some of those songs that Trey Anastasio composes, they're hard on guitar. <laughs> they're, like, difficult to play on guitar, and here I am transposing it to a standard tuned open G banjo. Mm -hmm. And it's just that (laughs) extra layer of challenge that I have to break through. And there's, there's sometimes where I'm just like, I can't, I can't do it. I just, I can't do it, you know? And then I'll slam a couple of Red Bulls and sit down and just like dive into it, you know, (laughs) focus my ADHD laser on it. And uh, you should send some of that to Trey, let him, be the judge. Oh, that'd be hilarious. That'd be yeah. Interesting. You stare actually, at your banjo definitely. and you go, I will bend you to make this sound. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. You do what I say now. I am the master now. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about uh, you guys are in Kansas City. You're performing quite a bit. You're, you're, you're from this area. We asked this of all the bands we've had the chance and the privilege of interviewing. Tell us in, just in a few words, the Kansas City music scene, what it is now, where you think it's going and where was it? say before COVID versus now? Wow. I guess I could start with that. That is a fantastic question. Um, Before COVID, uh, I think that the the scene was, um, was pretty robust in terms of, you know, how much music you could find the way people were going out to, you know, a lot of people doing traveling, like we, we traveled and did regional, you know, work in Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, South Dakota, Nebraska, you know, so we had our times out of town too to try to raise up, you know, the awareness of what we're doing and try to gain more fans out of town. Um, I think that a lot of the scene that I see right now after COVID is the tribute band. Um, I think the tribute bands are are very large pulls here in town. I think there a lot of the audience in here wants to live a nostalgic. Yeah, life. I was going to ask you, why do you think that is? You know, I, I think it's just the nostalgia of it, you know. And, and familiar. Comfort. Familiar. People like want to hear a Comfort's song a word, that they man. know. When like we, mac and cheese? Yes. <laughs> yeah. People yeah. want something that is familiar to them. And well, it's as a, easy. Well, as a venue owner, I'm, you know, yeah. certainly they're going to be draws. And Mike Kelly, you mm-hmm. know, who is uh, our home away from home. That's right. He's an old deadhead himself, right? But, you know, look at Frank at Nux. I mean, he just booked uh, two dead bands to come and play, you know, mm-hmm. Knuckleheads. Um, and not that he hadn't before, but because they're generating the fan base, they're yes. paying at the door, they're paying online. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, I don't go. 
particularly out to see a lot of tribute bands, unless it's, you know, a dead band. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. but, yeah. I mean, there's something there because these guys know and, they, you know, they've both been doing it over 20 years. So there's yeah. obviously something there to, to, to the pull for those you guys. You know, where I'd like to see it go, though, you know, it's, it's just besides the tribute bands, is bands like ourselves that are original, bands like the Supermassive Black Holes that are original, Caveman great Television band. that are original, MGDs that are original. Yes. I mean, there's some great music here in town that people maybe just don't get a chance to listen to because it's not familiar. But don't let that stop you because the music that you ended up falling in love with, that wasn't familiar when you first started right. listening. No, it started, yeah. started yeah. off the Well same said, way, Joshua. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the, the other two of you, share with us your thoughts on the Kansas City music scene. Um, I would say that they're, it's a very kind scene is what I would call it, like as far as the brotherhood and sisterhood of musicians in town, um, how they they welcome each other to all the open jam nights and you can network really easily. Um, but you mentioned the COVID thing. I feel like we've lost a lot of venues. Um, right now, it just seems like yeah. before there were a lot more places to play. Um, now it's kind of like each, each venue is just worth their weight in gold. Like it's just a very precious thing. So I, I, I'm happy that the ones that have pulled through, it kind of shows their toughness. Like Mike Kelly, you mentioned the fact that he was able to survive through that is just a testament to that. And place. during, during, yeah, right. during, yeah. With, you know, yeah. like the Nace brothers and Bob Walkenhurst doing, you know, stuff to pay Podcast. the, well, yeah, they were yeah. doing videos, exactly. uh, shows and all that money was well, going We did a live stream staff. and put all the money into the, the waitresses and, and the bar staff at. That's why those guys made it. Yeah. I mean, and Nux, that's where you did a Briar Fest, I mean, right? We, you know, when COVID was coming down the pipeline, I couldn't afford to take the gamble to pay for the whole festival. So I reached out to Frank and I said, I gave a couple of these bands some deposits already. I'm going to let them keep the money. Do you want to use them? Cause you're getting ready to open up. And he goes, what are the dates? I said, June 12th and 13th. And this was Briar Fest. Five, it was Briar Fest six. And he said, uh, well, you can just have my place for two days. I wow. said, really? Wow. So he gave us his place for two days uh, and we uh, streamed it. And we gave Mimi's Pantry in Riverside ten thousand three hundred dollars oh, during nice. COVID. So, nice. oh wow, uh, that was that was uh, Briar Fest. And then the next year, we thought we had lightning, and uh, we did it again. But that was the same weekend everyone released and did everything that same weekend. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. And uh, so, so then uh, now we're going to move it back to a, an open field and free to come to. So that's yeah. great. And it, yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Uh, it was. It's interesting seeing how it kind of felt to me like it did take a an extra year or two for things to really start to feel normal again. I think we're at that point now. So, um, we're, you know, we're, we're excited to play Briar Fest this year. And We're at that know. point, but I even like today, I was in some environments. As soon as I got my car, I put on my sanitizer. <laughs> I don't think yeah. I'll ever stop having it that. Get, you get yeah. used to it. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. sitting at my desk. I have a whole bottle of it, man. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I well, why not? I, yeah. yeah. The self-awareness of how things spread has really... It's you on know, the forefront of your it's mind. It's solid now. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I don't well, want to touch This is that. something else that we talked about coming out of COVID. I think it was Drew, Drew Six. We were talking about Yeah, a Drew talked about it. about it quite a bit. And so did uh, Deanne. Yeah. And, and differences that you found, you know, like you said, uh, venues aren't as abundant. Um, the multi bands, you know, um, or bands playing for multi dates, you don't see that a whole lot. But I mean, when I saw you guys last year, last summer, uh, over at Woodyards, right? You mm -hmm. were part of a bill that included two other bands, right? Yeah, it was yeah a, Pop and, Skull Rebels and Straw Billy. And Straw we played with. Yeah. And I was there to see, you know, uh, Jim and, and Teardrop, right? But got to see you guys perform, which I was just, it was the first time I ever got to see you. So, <laughs> you know, one of the reasons you're here today, <laughs> it yeah. was outstanding. I got to uh, run into you guys, um, and it was it was a good place. It was a good good scene, and you guys shared what forty five minute sets right. or so just one about, set yeah. for each group about forty five yeah. minutes. But even with that, you guys set up, you know, and the lights, and then that led me to last fall. I mean, when you go to Mike's, I don't know who in the band is spending the time <laughs> and the money on these lights, but let's <laughs> let's talk about this light show that you guys have for Tracer Heights. Sure, yeah, that was that's me. And um, this is Ben Hoppus. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ben. All right. Um, no, uh, I didn't want to announce you because I wasn't quite sure on the pronunciation of it's a hop Hoppus. Hoppus. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's kind of a it weird now. pronunciation of it. Nobody gets it right. So <laughs> okay. I don't mind. Yeah, it was funny. The way the lights, the way the lights started was kind of by accident. Um, we were doing one of our like mini tours 
going up north. And uh, we played this little place. Um, it was Iowa Falls, right? Yeah, yeah. Iowa Falls. So I got the city there. right. Okay. Yeah, you did. <laughs> and uh, it was just this little place in the middle of cornfields or soy fields or whatever it was. And there's this little square. And, and the square is just like this bar, right? And it's really close to like a college. So it's almost like this college hangout place. So we were playing there and it was like kind of packed. It was actually pretty happening little spot in the middle of the corn, you know? And, um, the owner had some lights set up and he had a foot switch and the foot switch, you can scroll through, um, you can go up and down through different presets and then you can do a blackout where it just turns them all off. And so we're performing and the whole time I'm just like switching the lights with my feet. I'm like, this is pretty freaking cool. I'm running lights and playing, you know? So I'm doing that. And, and it turned into like this whole production just out of nowhere, just cause we're playing and I could improv with both the lights and the music. And I was like, that's wild, you know? And, uh, when we got back, we actually got, it was the first time we got one of the trees, uh, these, these dragon X, uh, you know, yeah, like light trees. Yeah, yeah. Real, real inexpensive. Not very, not very much, but it had, uh, two foot switches where you can go up, you can scroll through different presets and then one that's a blackout. So I started practicing with that and got kind of good at it. So we got a second set of tree and uh, we set it up to where I, I just have one foot switch for each of those. And I started like just really getting into it. And, and I was like, it, this could be bigger. And what was funny is the pedals actually died. Like they quit working. <laughs> I'm like, crap. So I need to find a way to, to like control these. And I found this thing, it's called a Bigfoot by Euralite. And it's an actual DMX foot switch controller that, you know, has, you know, you can scroll through different banks and you can program different fixtures. And it was like, you know, what you would think of a DMX light controller, but in a foot switch. Okay. And instead of faders, it actually has expression pedals. I was like, this is wild. I could do way more than this, right? So I started doing that. And then I got a couple of movers. Like actually, you know, little ADJ, ADJ uh, pocket spots, mm -hmm. right? Super cheap, not very expensive at all, right? And I could actually like move them around and actually have this big production where I'm controlling everything with my feet while I'm playing. It's the wildest thing. And then, awesome. yes, awesome. he does shred the banjo and do the lights all in sync. When At Joshua goes time. into space, I guess that's a lot of fun with the lights, though, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's yeah, great. Because then I can, I can kind of <laughs> free up myself and just do lights. Nice. You know? yeah. I, was, I mean, just our music goes so well with the lights. Crazy lights moving I, around. I in totally sync, agree with that. Yes. And it's just, they go together and it, it well, is now, great. Now I understand because you got somebody who's got a little rhythm in there mm -hmm. playing. Well, rhythm lights. Yeah, you know. and people don't always know that it's one of the musicians controlling it. They'll say, "Who was running lights?" Do they it's really know different. your music? I didn't. I yeah. had no idea. It's something now, different. You do know? the both trees oh. have the same colors? Um, well, I, they're they're separate, so oh. I could have, um, uh, you know, I could have one one side have, you know, red blue red blue red blue. The other side have red blue red blue red blue, and then have them like switched where it's blue, oh, yeah. red, blue, red, blue, red. I can change them really however I want individually through those different pars. And, um, it's like, uh, then I've got the front washes that I can change the color of the band. Like the band can change colors mm -hmm. and you know, um, it's, it's all pretty separate, like in terms of programming. Wow. How, how, how yeah. big is this total component? Uh, like, like, like are your lights all spread out across your stage area that you guys are playing? Is um, that how that's set up? I had a couple of different, arrays like where uh i have one where there's eight pars just the solid lights that are all lined up on the back of us okay and then i've got the two front washes on each side of the stage that way we're all lit and everything and then we have that but then i've also done where um i have the the eight pars like kind of at a v shape okay so it kind of sticks out a little bit more it kind of depends on the venue like if it's a smaller stage you know they're going to be more squished in so but it's a more. half hour setup it's not an all-day thing uh, it, it might be no. more of an hour it's more like, like an, an hour, hour about an hour half. setup i mean yeah. you got hazers as well too which yeah. create the reason why it's behind us is just like any jam band he's got it perfectly synced where it creates these tubes of light around us because the haze are on stage is creating, you know, all those. See the beams. Now, now the other Grateful Dead bands that I've been around, they don't have a light show like that that I've no. seen. They no. just got still. Well, Better Off Dead started with one the other night, yeah. man. I'll tell you what. They, Did they? Yeah, they're, they got lasers we're, now. We're, we're yeah. setting the trend. You know? Yeah, the trend. I've been trying to help too because it, it's funny because Billy Melv. Sure. Um, yeah. Uh, he was asking about the haze. 
Right. And he was like, man, my, my hog, my hog, my fog machine <laughs> sucks. Mm-hmm. It's like, it just belts out like a big cloud of smoke and then it goes away. It, it's terrible. And it stinks. And it's like, right. how do you do it? Well, I make my own haze fluid. I actually Mr. learned Genius. how to do it. Wow. And Mr. Genius over here. Do you drink it? it you can. <laughs> Is you it can. purple? It's not, it's not purple. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Okay. I'm still working on the formula for that one. <laughs> okay. No, I mean, all it is, is is vegetable glycerin and distilled water. Wow. That's all it is. And then you, you adjust the ratios to where um, if it's going to be an outdoor setting, you want it a lot thicker. Okay. Um, but if it's an indoor kind of a smaller session, you want it a lot thinner. So it's Man, like that you, is you have to awesome. adjust. So I can you know, attest to that, that Billy guy listened for to him. Fest. I'm telling you, it's he would cheap. be great. I know. It is so cheap. I, I, it's not expensive. I, I, yeah. I can I attest, you know, that Billy actually used it at their show on Friday night. Mm. Wow. And and created oh, a haze? The haze, yeah. The haze yeah. worked? Yeah, the haze worked. Can we talk you into help? Can we talk you into setting it up at Briarfest? <laughs> oh gosh, yeah. 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 By the way, his lighting company is called Vermilion Lighting. Yeah. Company. Vermilion Lighting. Yeah, I do actually I have a uh, Facebook page. This is it, a guy yeah. that can be hired for your show, so don't forget that. Vermilion Lighting. Vermilion Well, and that's the thing I think about about being in a in a indie you can call it independent band, whatever whatever you want to call it you're kind of you have to wear a lot of hats you have to be your own pr person you yes. have to be your own graphics person Absolutely. sound yes. lights and you have to play so yes. you know it almost seems like sometimes you're tired by the time you start the show because <laughs> but it's worth it we want to put each on carry, quality shows yeah, we know? each carry our own, we our own specific load, yeah. little thing that we do like i do all the promotion the video and he does a lot of uh promotion sound. and booking and sound and he does you know a lot of the Promotion and booking and lights. And so we all kind of have our, our area. Like my, I used to be in advertising and public relations with my dad. And so I kind of. Here in Kansas City. Yeah. I just kind of, you know, approach it that way. We actually had a uh, agency here in Blue Springs. I was just talking to Andy about that earlier. Oh, nice. So you guys so, spread it out pretty evenly amongst the three of you. you we try to. Yeah. We try. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. So Joshua, your, your drums percussion, right? That's um, correct. You have, you set out any bongos, anything like that in addition to the, the, just the drums? It depends upon what the show is, you know, our stripped down version of us, you know, well, I can have a cajon and a djembe, which are typically yeah. it's a djembe, not congas that I play. Stage size, uh, I'm sure. Comes right. Play. Right. And, um, Sometimes it's just a mini set rather than the entire setup like I normally have, you know, yeah. with softer rock sticks. It just, yeah, it really depends. But, like, if I'm going to set up a hand drum and I do every once in a while, it's it's a djembe. And, Ben, as far as instruments go, besides the banjo, uh, any other instruments you're you're playing? Uh, not, not live. Um, I do play acoustic guitar, but that's kind of a private it's, yeah. it's a personal it's thing. kind of my own thing yeah <laughs> and then jeremy you're you're the guitar man right uh electric bass i'd play bass uh, electric i don't bass and i haven't worked in the upright bass quite yet but okay. i would like to in the future but yeah primarily we'll get you just with like, our good friend chase hey, oh i know he's amazing oh i was just chase watching him cool. online yesterday. he's a monkey <laughs> yeah <laughs> he climbs yeah yes um, yeah i do electric bass and vocals cool. okay and where did this banjo come from? You know, just backing up to that just a second ago. So of all the instruments, you met them, you were already playing banjo. Mm-hmm. But where did the actual physical instrument come from? Did you find it in Uncle Willie's cabinet? Was it <laughs> bestowed upon you upon someone Steve dying? Martin. Where was it? <laughs> well, are you talking about like, like my what my reasoning for playing banjo? Yeah, well, or? like, wh- at what moment in your life did you meet Mr. Banjo and decide he's your buddy? Oh, that was weird. Um, See, well, that's what I want to yeah. know. <laughs> Tell me the weird shit. <laughs> <laughs> weird is good. Weird is very good. Uh, well, Give the story to us. Gro- growing up, growing up, um, country music, bluegrass. Okay. Um, old, old, old music. Like, you know, think Merle Haggard. You think um, uh, Hank Williams, that kind of stuff. Hank, the Vince, the Lou's. Band. Yes. In my house. Carter's. Yes. Not allowed in my house. Why? Was it the devil music? No. Apparently, my mom's, my grandparents, my mom's parents, right. apparently tortured her with it. I don't know why. Oh, just the opposite. Uh, yeah, so orange with the banjo. Not allowed. Yeah, none of yeah. that. It was like this twangy, nasty thing that she, oh. would, she heard it. She thought she was going to throw <laughs> up. So uh, it was, uh, and, and then my parents split, right? And oh. it was just me, my dad, and my siblings. 
And so you know how that goes, you know, broken families. It's like no holds. It's like chaos, sure, you know. Sure. So do whatever you want, boy. Yeah. yeah <laughs> just, one by one, just, I just am. Don't make a mess, and I'll carry. Let out the dog. Right. Uh, so uh, um, I, I found a band. Okay, do you guys remember in the '90s there was these weird albums way that back came in out? the '90s. Okay, okay. In the nineties. All right. Yeah, I'm starting to feel old now. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Way back in the nineties, yes. Um there was a there's these weird albums called like Instrumental Magic. Okay. And it was like these compilations of because you know, then you had to have a actual CD, you had to order these. Sure. And it was like Chariots of Fire, um K Tail Presents. Yeah, just just like yeah. all these in, these really famous yeah. instrumental uh, two thousand one Space night. Odyssey, all these instrumental songs, right? And right. one of them was dueling banjos. And so I, it, the commercial came on and I was like, what the hell was that? <laughs> I never heard a banjo. I was like 12 years old. Never heard one before. And it was just like this machine gun of notes. Just Holy like, shit. And I was, I was like, that is not human. And I was able to kind of catch it. And I was like, I, it's a banjo. And, uh, you know, I asked my dad for Christmas. It was the only thing I he asked. He said, for. you'll put your eye out, kid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Red Rider yeah. banjo. Yeah. 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 You'll blow your ears out, exactly. son. Yeah. 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 But like I said, you know, parents are split. It was all chaos. And he right. was like, I will get you a banjo for Christmas. And he bought me like this horrible, rusted, nasty banjo. He said he went to three different pawn shops to try to find one. It was like $100. Right. And as soon as I played my first chord on it, I you was like, You ripped your thumb off. All right, this is it. And, you know, this, okay. this is oh, it. You knew. Yeah. And, I figured he would have just given you the movie Deliverance and said, Yeah, watch yeah, this. I've seen, I've seen it. It's great up until a point. <laughs> it's a good Squeal movie. Like a yeah, that one little part. Yeah. That's a great story. And I'm going to add some of that. I don't even know anything about it, just in family psychology. Your dad looked you in the eyes and said, <laughs> your mom hated the banjo, right? <laughs> sure you can have it. I never thought about that. I never thought and about that. And I want you to take it when you go and stay with her. You're, right? probably, you're probably right. <laughs> Dr. Robert. Now it makes sense. Uh, I just had a breakthrough. Oh, I'll have good. a breakdown later. <laughs> that's I'll fun. I'll have a breakthrough today. All that's right, fun. let's talk about your that's guys' uh, so original funny. stuff. Um, you have... Uh, an album out? Is that correct? We have a couple correct. albums. Couple we have, albums. We have one studio album and one live album. 2021, The First Sight. Yep, it's called First Sight. First Sight. Mm -hmm. And uh, did you guys record that here in town? Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, Weights and Measures. Weights and Measures Weights is and measures. where we recorded that one Absolutely. over in yeah. KC. And uh, so what's the other one? Is it out or you're just releasing The other it? one uh, was... Was it before then? No, yes. It was when we first got together, we were... 2015? Uh, yeah, in the 2015, I think, was when that was recorded. That one, no, I think it was 2016 when it was recorded, actually. Okay. Yeah, 2016 was when it was recorded. And that, it kind of goes story. back to what we were talking about with the the venues. I mean, it was at Davies Uptown, Which, you know, rest yeah. in peace. Oh, God. Not there anymore. Uh, that's a loss. Yeah. yeah. And that was, you know, we were we were playing a gig there, and the other band couldn't make it, so we had to fill extra time. We were a new band at the time. Um, so, and, and at the time they were not allowing cover songs at all. I don't think they were licensed for it and that kind of thing. We had our, you know, we had just started, so we had original songs, but we didn't have that much. We, we were really playing with ten. other bands. We yeah. had with 10, ten songs. songs and she's like, I need you to cover three hours. Yeah. I need to cover yeah. the whole night. So I'm like, okay. Yeah. And so we can just we rotate and, <laughs> and they had a, they had the modern mixer where you can just press record into a USB. And so. You know, we were filling time. That's kind of when we started really learning improv. about the improv. Yeah, absolutely. We would take these three, five-minute songs and make them 10, 15 minutes, and we really liked what came out of that, so we picked the best five or six songs. I mean, I think it only has five songs, but it's still... 55 minutes we made long. it we I made it know. through the three hours we did it yeah we did it it was about 10 15 minutes a song and that's like he said you know where we really started to hone in on okay we need to really improv on this where are we going with this and a lot of that improv like we've been talking about too is is um and we'll do it at practice too it's not all the time but some of the time it's it's a follow the leader thing like i'll start out with a beat and then ben will hear it and then ben will pick it up and then jeremy will hear it he'll pick it up or vice versa you know and and it's a lot of that improv is follow the leader. It's kind of Are you cool. recording, I'm guessing? Yeah, you're we doing record that? rehearsals. Sure. So you can kind of go back and review mm -hmm. back. And, you know, we record our own shows sometimes. And we have one song that we just have started debuting. Basically, we played it out a couple of times. But the main kind of middle section of it is literally straight out of an improvisational piece that we recorded at a show. And, like, I really, we like, I said that, let's listen back to this. Listen to this three minutes of that listen jam. Listen to that lightning. And, like, right. yeah, let's make exactly. that. Mm -hmm. 
we'll put that in one of our songs as a composed thing. Good feedback from the and, crowd. Yep, and it's it's been good. We, we're kind of in the process now of, I think, trying to introduce another round of new songs because we're kind of, I think, at the beginning maybe of another album cycle, so... Oh, nice. Yeah, it is, it is kind of interesting. I like I like doing it that way, where uh, you know we'll we'll get these songs together. They're not one hundred percent, but then we'll go out and play it a few times. Test pilot. Yeah, and and it's like okay, this song is working. And then once we get pretty comfortable with it, like live, then we can go in and start creating like more of a studio version of it. Yeah, you know, a couple of bands have mentioned that's been kind of their beta test. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, it's kind of like. The crowd, too, has, you might, like you guys were saying, you customize your sound to the mood of what you're doing with people. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's kind of like, you know that one song that gets people up off their ass? Let's play that song and <laughs> yeah. see if it gets up off their, yes. you know? Uh, yeah. So it, it's good to have that opportunity, that live beta test going on, because, you know, a lot of times it's the opposite. You're so high on your Kool-Aid. You're like, dude, everyone's going to love this, man. And yeah, right, right. And right. you're like, not oh sure. God. Yeah. And yeah. then you, the crickets, and you're like so disappointed. You're like, well, why did we waste our time? So, well, mm-hmm. the venue, I mean, yeah. the venues change. So you're going to get different things. I mean, you know, wind's not going to be at every, you know, every gig. So, you know. But she's at the majority of them. <laughs> she's a very <laughs> large she fan of our band. On the dance floor. Yeah. Shout out to Wynn Smith, man. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah. love, love her. Love her to death. Yes. Yeah. Spinner of Kansas City. Yes. Um, again, uh, we're in the studio today with Tracer Heights. Uh, again, thank you guys for being here. I uh, really do appreciate your time. Thank you. Great stuff. And, um, I'm going to let Robert have this uh, next one here. So because... we talked a, We talked a little bit about how you guys got together. The two of you played, mm-hmm. and so, then we yeah. brought in. When it, well, yeah, Ben and I, you know, we're going to start a project, and we just kept saying, you know, we just need to find a drummer. That's the only thing. And then, you know, the, I immediately knew the first time I played with Josh that there was something there. And so I asked Ben, you know, hey, I found somebody. Let's, that's how we. Talking so much about the the, the Grateful Dead music, and that scene of the multiple artists that have sprinkled across the landscape of Jerry's dance. And you guys are a trio. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, do you ever feel like, God, we need to add a horn, man. What about three more people? How about a <laughs> harmony section? Listen, we need another drum. You guys ever feel like that? Or do you feel like you guys give enough of a wampum with the three of you that fills up all the holes? Well, we can. We can. I mean, as yeah. a trio yeah. for eight years, there we can we can make it sound we can fill those spaces. Fill those spaces. Yeah. But it's funny that you mentioned that. We always thought that it might be very cool to bring in a keyboardist right on to what we're doing, mm-hmm. and we have started doing that in the last year. A really talented gentleman by the name of Billy Lowenstein out of Cameron, Missouri. Okay. Uh, He doesn't play all the shows with us, but a lot of big shows. Cool. He he will be with us at Briarfest, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. Nice. Awesome. um, And he's a phenomenal player. I think he just gets us, and the only way that we were going to add somebody to this trio is not only do they like the music we're doing, but do they get what we're trying to do. Right, right. I'll let Ben take that further. Yeah, (laughs) tell us about that. You guys sit in Indian style, meditate about it. Well, how do you get, what's the process? (laughs) Well, it's, it's hard to, it's almost just like a feeling. It's like, okay, we're all, it's like, we can all tell exactly what the end goal is. It's like, you know, we're playing, but then all of a sudden things start changing and shifting, but we're all changing and shifting together. You know, and it's it's like we have the same idea of what we want. You guys are aware of, of each other as you're doing it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. that's the key with you guys. And, right. and hearing yeah. it and not even yeah. looking at each other, being off into that space. My eyes might be closed. His eyes might be closed. But we can feel when we're about to make a turn. We can feel when something's about to be a climax. We can feel when it's about to be a valley. It's yeah. crazy. How yeah, it it's like, like I, I know yeah. when Josh was about to do like a bigger fill. It's like, right on. it's like, oh, I could hear. Oh, there's a ding there. Oh, he did it again. Okay, here we go. And there we go. Okay, there we go. All right, cool. There it is. You know, you know it's like having these really subtle com- things. Having there. that confidence yeah. also makes you land the song right when you're ending it. Yeah. You know, a lot of people have beautiful, oh, my God, oh, my God, and it's a crash landing. Yeah. You know, you're yeah. like, shit, the end of that yeah. didn't come yeah, together. We have those but, you know, We've it, had those before. Yeah. Those, yeah. It happens. It Any happens. musician's going to have those. Well, it's like Hornsby when he joined, you know, Jerry, and, uh, you know, it was mm-hmm. going to be difficult. I mean, to replace Brent was going to be hard period right right but to know that those ebbs and flows of how that band moves around right and of course any of the 
But like you know, I learned a lot from feelings the, that they were having, right? You know, depending yeah. on what they were doing, uh, yeah. you know. I learned a lot musically from them. I mean, that would probably the, the dead side of things is probably what I would bring to this group. You know, I also like Fish, just like Jeremy and Ben do. They like multiple other musicians as well, too. Obviously, I mean, Ben has a an idol out there that people might know. Yeah, like a like the Bela Fleck angle. Bela we get Fleck, that, you know, with the electric. So we all kind of bring nice. everything together. I it be but that's why the Steve Martin. <laughs> Well, and that's actually that's really you know, yeah one that's, of his influences. Yeah. When I very yeah. first when I very first started playing, it's funny because I would tell people, "Yeah, have you heard Steve Martin play?" It was like the guy from SNL. <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, he is really good. This really was, good. Yeah, He's awesome. he was. This stuff is back in the '70s, yeah. you know." And I was like, "You should listen to him play." And I started learning some of the licks that he was doing by watching him play. Yeah. And it was the craziest thing. Nobody believed me. I'm like, no, Steve Martin's really good. And then yeah. all of a sudden, what what did he come out? He, it was not that long ago. He came out with an album, Steve yeah. Canyon Ranger. He toured for toured. almost three yeah. years. Yeah. And yeah. blew everybody away. Yeah. And they were I, like, saw, I had no idea. And I like, saw I him in New Orleans. He was badass. Yeah. Oh, did you really? Yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah. 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 That would have been so, awesome. You know, the thing about Steve Martin is like, he's an ultimate entertainer. And like, he's like, haven't tried that. I'm going to try it. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. But my point was, is like, so the original music with us as a trio really comes together because we all, at least from a jam pan perspective, have a different type of influence out there, different groups yeah. that we were into. And so we bring that all together into our own original sound. And I'm, I'm, I'll always brag about it, man. We're one of the yeah, most unique should. bands in town. You will you, not find you anybody should. in town that's doing the same thing as us. Yep. Yeah, uh, it is. You a guys mixture. have great sound. That is no question. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and I was going to say regarding regarding the keyboard player and the other instrumentation. So, one of the things we've always liked about this group is, and the way I put it is, we kind of each have our own department, right? There's drums and percussion. There's bass. There's the banjo, which also gets into the territory of covering like uh, electric bluegrass. guitar, picking, yeah, and bluegrass. But there isn't like you know we've been when Ben and I were in a blues band, for example, there were three guitar type sound instrumentation in the group. So you'd always have to figure out like, okay, you play up the neck, you play this voicing, you play, we don't really have that. We have free reign in our own space for our part of the frequency spectrum, whatever you want to call it. And so that's why we've always thought keyboards would be the perfect fourth thing to add, because that's another department basically that they right, can it's not live in. It's yeah. adding. Right. Yeah. 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 And, but not just because of the music, but because it fits you guys. Yeah. The, and you can your, just, you can be more creative. Yeah. It's a matter of listening too. There's a lot of critique that came back over the years that was like, you guys are so talented, but it's just, I got all that high end going on and I'm just missing like There's that mid range. And yeah. so when we brought in a keyboardist, all of a sudden, that mid range started to fill was in. Was that just and, this year? Uh, it's it, been about a year. Been about a year now. now. Yeah, okay. been about a year now. We've done it. We'll and we'll, you know, we basically just told him he's a he's a fantastic musician. He's a very educated musician. Um, he just can fit right in there. So just anytime and you're Cameron, available, come play with us. Quick. And, yeah, he's yeah, raising yeah, three so. kids. He lives out of town in Cameron. You know, has yep. a job, family. We understand that. So he's not going to be at every single show. Yeah. Yeah. That's the best part about the group is we've always still been a trio. We can make that music, but it's that much better when we have Billy Lowenstein on stage. Yeah, Billy Lowenstein. Billy Lowenstein <laughs> uh, yeah. just rolls right off your tongue. It sure yes, does. It does. <laughs> he should have a beer named after him. <laughs> so I've heard, I've heard people call him Billy Keys. Obviously, we got his. We got Joshua's. Uh, Jeremy, what what kind of influence musical influences are are you from? Well, so for me as a bass player, I think all bass is um, you got to think of things like Stax Records and Motown. Right. So like the James Jamerson sound, the Duck Dunn sound, right? Duck That's Dunn. really even though I am really interested in and in experiencing all the improvisational music like things like Grateful Dead and you know, you got Phil Lesh and people like that. I've always been drawn to that Motown uh Stax record kind of groove, um, to where it's 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 just kind of like this I don't know, reliable, I almost would call it like a blue collar approach to music. Everybody's kind of in their pocket. And then what I find is I kind of take that as a springboard for exploring the improvisational way out there stuff. So I'm always trying to combine those two things, like a Phil Lesh and a Duck Dunn. So maybe for this song, I might play the same three notes for 10 minutes straight, or maybe I'll just be soloing 
uh, on my own, you know, whenever he's playing rhythm. But um, those are kind of my... Are you four string or six? Uh, five string. Five string? Yeah. Nice. And like for me, Mount Rushmore is probably like James Jamerson, Duck Dunn, Phil Lesh, and Mike Gordon. Uh, that's kind of... So he kind of gives you an idea. I haven't heard things. Duck Dunn's name in decades. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and the thing about Duck Dunn, he's kind of like... If you're a James Jamerson fan, but you're not as good, Duck Dunn's more approachable. <laughs> not that he didn't write genius bass lines. They're sure. just more approachable. Right. James Jamerson was like a sublime, his own thing, yeah. you know, that you can't just sit down and put the hours in and be. He was a one of a kind. We but. have some fantastic bass players in this town. Boy, do we. I am yeah. telling you. We are. always have a job, too. Oh, my gosh. We are so privileged. <laughs> yeah, that. like for me in town, if you want to talk about local, I like Johnny Hamill. To me, Johnny Hamill is probably the best Very good. for me. Um, uh, Alexis Barclay is an influence of mine. Um, just before I played music, watching him play. Like, unlike these guys, I started kind of late in life. Like, I started in 2010 playing bass. Um they were playing, you know, as they were kids in the 90s. I, I wasn't like that. I was more of just a listener and, a, you know. And so I saw a lot of the people we play with play bass before I even played. And so I kind of had to cram and, you know, go into the woodshed yeah. for a couple of years there. The, ba the blues band was my first band. It was a great thing to learn the ropes because blues has formulas and keys. Cliff Moore. Yep. Oh, yeah, Cliff, Cliff Moore. Moore. He's Cliff one of our is, favorites. He is He's probably so cool. every He's note. Pinnacle. Yeah, every note Just got he back plays. from Europe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He puts every note right in the right place. But, I mean, when it comes to it's blues, so that is, for He's sure. He's the top. I would agree uh, there. James Albright, probably one of my favorites in yeah. town, just because he's Jimmy can, Lacey. Jimmy's gotten to be so yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we go on and on. Yeah, but, I know. Yeah. But, well, yeah. Uh, let's, let's keep moving on, Roger, I think, or Roger. Robert, <laughs> call me Ted, please. Ted. Hi, hey, Bob. This is Robert this Beers here at Kansas City Limits <laughs> Radio, and uh, we're in the studio here with our good friend Tracer Heights talking to Ben, Joshua, and Jeremy, the trio of psychedelic sound in Kansas City. They've <laughs> nice. they've got this light situation. I'm just uh, really excited to go check out at one of their shows. But you know, one of the things we wanted to talk about, and again, another question we asked the folks that we have the opportunity to interview. You know, and, and I'll just address this and anyone can take the question. When you're talking about this improvisation, you know, and, and I'm in a band too, you know, improvisation isn't always structured. So it's a good thing you recorded. But when you guys are talking about your song structure, it's not always so improvisation or not. Is it instrumental? Is it verbal first that turns instrumental? Or is it instrumental that turns verbal? I'll take it, this one. Yeah, Go ahead. Go ahead Joe. Just first, uh, I, you, you can add to it, but there's a song, for example, that I wrote that is on our album called Ben Below, and that entire song was written from a drum beat that I fell in love with from Prince, because I'm originally from Minnesota, Cool. a song called Cream, and it's just this cream, t -t -t -t. and I wrote all the lyrics, and I wrote that entire song, then brought it to them, and they added in a melody and everything, so I think it can go any... Wow. Any way, really, cool. in terms yeah, it, of writing. It, it, it all depends on on what happens. Who, yeah. who drags most the, the the compositions or ideas? Is it you? you? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I have a tendency to, to drive a lot of the composing. Yeah. yeah. Um, like Jeremy's written a song. Um, Josh has written a couple songs for us. And, uh, you know, me, I, I, I just sit and just listen and, and try to play different uh, melodies and find different chord progressions. Sometimes I'm studying something where... Um, like recently, I've, I've been studying some classical chord progressions, like how those work, something called the Neapolitan progression, sure. the Neapolitan chords. And, um, you know, Jeremy brought in um, just lyrics. And I think you did have a little bit of a vocal melody. Mm -hmm. And that's where I found the key. But then I started putting these different um, classical compositions behind it. And it turned into like this whole other thing. So it seems to be like our, our um, kind of our main somewhat process is we have lyrics and a key and that's usually how it starts well, who, who's then, putting the lyrics down um it, we all do all well, we, we've all written yeah. as we've gotten older as a group but the majority of what we do are songs that ben wrote years ago mm -hmm. he did as a solo musician and then uh, brought them to us and allowed us to flesh them out and make them tracer heights songs i want to pause there for just a second and compliment you guys again he allowed you guys to hear his old songs and put stuff to him. 
Yes. That is the true definition of a kick-ass dude, because usually it's the yes. other way around. Yes, you are yeah, correct. I didn't write that song. I don't even think I know about it. Mm-hmm. What are you showing your song for? Right. Instead, you guys are like, kick-ass, let's help this guy's song kick-ass, and thank you. We're flattered you're sharing it with us. Yeah. Kudos yeah. to you guys. Five different cookies to y'all, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I like to say I'm the most privileged in town, because I there is never really fights between the three of us, and we, we all agree as three, or we don't do it. That's right. cool. Yeah. Who would so, win? Oh, well, he's Physically, the tallest. He's the judge. tallest. Have they, you ever they, seen they, that they, YouTube <laughs> video where the, the drummer's like beating the crud out of the, the gets in the I fight? Did. with We've yeah, had a couple of those I moments. They also <laughs> like Indian leg wrestle, and he's got longer legs. Uh, like he yeah. does. All but right. I would. I like to say we kind of. Yeah, we have this treasure trove of material that Ben. We haven't even debuted half of it yet, mm-hmm. and but we always want to take it and make it put our stamp on it as a three piece and you know when you're doing solo you're a little bit more limited in what you can do so it's great to go back and revisit him and sometimes he's even embarrassed we have to convince him like no that's a good that's song a good that song you wrote. man what are you, you talking it about down for yeah. a reason yeah. man yeah. Yeah. there's yeah. something there it's a, <laughs> it could be a challenge for me because of like Jer- like sometimes Jeremy will start singing it and I'm like oh my god what did I do <laughs> what did I do what did and I, I have to like get I have to push past that and we're like it's okay uh, they think it's cool, so I've, I'll just, it's, I'll just fu- run it's with funny. It, you know? The guy that's making is the only one that's doubting it. The other yes. guys are like, "Yeah, go for it. That's great." <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's support, man. It's, Some it's are great and to have. That I, I can think it's of awesome. one that you know. It's not even always the lyric. Sometimes it's the vocal melody. Sometimes it's the structure, and it becomes a totally different song. Like we have one where you know it's just got all these hooks. It gets stuck in your head. But he was just like, "I don't. I've never liked the lyrics. I don't want these lyrics." And so I just sat down and rewrote the whole all the lyrics. But I just. I just had to fill in the, it was already mapped out. It was just different words over those exact same vocal melodies and choruses. And just a different way to get there. That's awesome. You guys can be like that to each other. That's Again, guys, uh, we appreciate you being here. Uh, Tracer Heights, um, just want everybody to know that Tracer Heights can be found uh, on the web at tracerheights.com. You can find them on Facebook at Tracer Heights and Instagram at Tracer Heights. And then whatever the fuck this is, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's uh, Bandcamp. Oh, band, band it's actually camp. where people buy our album. Ah, <laughs> it's the most important. Here, let me redo that voiceover. Tracer we'll edit that part out. Heights and you can Bandcamp. <laughs> and you can download all their music at tracerheights.bandcamp.com. That is yep, correct. There it is. And we'll have some samples of that music. <laughs> now, your next gig you got coming up, I'm pretty excited about. Oh, well, yeah, Warwick. Briar Fest, no, oh, oh, yeah, Fest yeah, September 9th. When this one oh, actually, yes, but yeah, it's yeah, Briar right. Fest. We can cut that out. We're yeah. excited about it too because we have <laughs> wanted to for quite a while uh, and we've still been, you know, putting stuff together. Of course, we play a lot of places, but we don't play a lot of festivals and we're made for a festival. Yes. That's cool. the type of I band thought, I saw we you are. outside in that atmosphere. That's yeah. why I thought yeah. of you guys. Yeah, it's it's I think that it's it's one that I'm very excited about just for the fact that we can be outside and we can be in an atmosphere that like what this band is really truly made to do. Well, we're yeah. we're super excited to have you. And for those of you at home that don't know what Briar Fest is, it's a two day free music festival, September eighth and ninth at Mackin Park. In North Kansas City, it's free to attend. Bring your blankets, your chairs. 26 bands, two stages, a food court, a beer forest, an art wine oasis, hot air balloon rides, and this wonderful band, Tracer Heights, is going to take the stage about, what, 6 o'clock? Well, I'll give you the rundown. Here's the the lineup of the festival for Briar Fest. Friday, Friday, September 8th, um, we have Levytown opening the show for us. uh, Jack Arut, uh, actually a recipient of Midwest Music Foundation, and he did whatever he could to, to get into this show, I'm going to mm-hmm. tell you. Uh, then the Vincents come on stage, followed by Pop Skull Rebels, uh, my good friends with Oscar Polk and the All-Stars, Carl Warden, and Cherry Bomb to end the night on Friday. Sat in this again is the main stage Saturday September 9th, uh, we get started at noon, and that will be a uh, similar animal. Alex Arbomovitz and Alex his Abramovitz. swing. Yeah. Abramovitz. And the Kansas City Swing <laughs> Jazz Band. band. Yeah. That's a I've mouthful. seen them. They're great. He's and awesome. They are, and they're playing this weekend, in fact. Uh, then we have Stranded in the City, Brooke Kafka and Friends, the Free Rent Band. Uh, this Our good friend Robert uh, will be headlining that. And then to be followed by you guys, Tracer Heights. 
uh, old number five, and then finishing the night out Saturday is four fried chickens in a Coke. And Robert, you have more of a knowledge of the um, the beer garden bar. Yeah, we've got uh, School stage. of Rock has always helped us out over there. We've got Pathfinder. We've got the Newland Band. We've got Jacqueline Bell over there. We've got a three piece called Jazz for Good. We've got another ensemble that we just booked a couple of weeks ago. Their names are Michael Kelly and his Twister. And he's just a single guy. He's coming up from Arkansas. We're gonna have to put him up for the night. What's the twister? It's just him and his looper. I think he's got. Nice. He's a one man <laughs> choice. Band. That's that's. Are you, uh, these songs are I might have to twist you. Choice. Uh, yeah, nice. Choice. Anyway, it's gonna be two days of music. Uh, proceeds benefit Synergy Services and Midwest Music Foundation, North Kansas City Parks. And this is Briarfest Eight. And I really appreciate you guys coming and being a part of it. I appreciate Kansas City Limits and Jay Cornwell for helping us out with all the lineup. Uh, you know, he, my he, privilege. he kind of took uh, most of that off my plate uh, this year, putting the festival together and uh, really appreciate him. Yeah. You know what it's like it, producing shows and playing shows. It gets to be a, it's lot, a little so tired. It's a little bit. <laughs> it's a whole bunch. Yeah. It's a I, whole bunch. I'm fortunate to have uh, what I would consider, you know, uh, friends in this town that, that play a lot of great music and, you know, to be able to call them up and say, Hey, you're not going to be making a whole lot of money here, and that's not what it's about. Exactly, but yeah. we do have three foundation or two foundations and a great charity uh, at North Kansas City Park and Rec. But um, Midwest Music Foundation, um, Rhonda Lynn over there, they do some great work. For that's the reason why we chose to do this. It, they are so awesome. good at what they <clears throat> yeah. and Synergy, which Robert's had for for many years. They're what Help they the do. Homeless. That's right. It's Domestic just incredible. Issues. That's great. That's great. Um, so listen, uh, again, guys, we appreciate you guys coming in. Find this podcast and more at Kansas City Limits TV. Thanks again for joining us. Remember, be good to yourself, be good to others, and be good to musicians. We'll see you next time. Amen. Thank you. The broken wing flies in a circle with a knife on a string, cuts a hole in the earth. Release the bees with the heads of a dog to engulf the atmosphere. For no other reason than to block out the sun for everyone to see and to hear. Tilling an empty field for the worm to refuse to yield. It's a flying fish with burnt feathers and a nail for a beak. They take a trench to the pond from a creek. The farmer looked down and he saw the intimate connection right next to his reflection. There's a cat and mouse arguing about God and the devil. 
heaven and hell. Who to keep secret and who to tell? Who to deceive and who to believe? Before they make the connection of immaculate conception, they look the other direction. Angel with a broken wing flies in a circle with a knife on a string, cuts a hole in the earth. Release the bees with the heads of the dog to engulf the atmosphere. For no other reason than to block out the sun For everyone to see and to hear In a diner, there's people drinking mud through a straw. Taking each other's eyes out with a roll the cloth. And there's no black and white, just a thin sheen of gray. And their face melt on toast, looked out of the window to say. sank in the ground while fingers fall off and crawl on the floor like maggots on a guitar and they belt out a lonely tune to mourn the family that's stuck on tape somewhere and the screaming chorus rang out angel with a broken wing flies in a circle with a knife on a string cuts a hole in the earth release the bees with the heads of the dog to engulf the atmosphere for no other reason than to block out the sun For everyone to see and to hear Angel, angel, angel Angel 